Hey, it's Sam. And John. And you can watch new episodes of our latest podcast, OKOP, where we tell the funniest freaking stories on the internet. Like someone making billions off a of plane RuneScape? Oh, who make those Bitcoin billies. Or the doctor accidentally putting the mistress as the emergency contact instead of the wife. Hey, yo, that sounds like a family feud. Do not tell Steve Harvey. But the point is, we got some bangers. Yes, so if you want to laugh and occasionally cringe, listen now for free wherever you get your podcasts. The Fibber, McGee, and Molly Show. NBC and Paper Mate Pens bring you Fibber, McGee, and Molly transcribed. The show is written by Phil Leslie and Ralph Goodman and directed by Max Hutto. Join Fibber and Molly in just a moment. Within the next five years, millions of additional children will crowd the elementary schools. Unless communities begin today to prepare for this increased enrollment, our children and our nation will suffer. The kind of education your child receives must be a matter of vital concern to you. It will affect his whole life. It will determine his eligibility for college, his training for a job, his usefulness as a citizen and his very happiness. If America is to provide enough teachers and enough classrooms so that our children can receive a decent education, each of us must take immediate steps to improve some of our local school systems. Hundreds of thousands of additional teachers must be enrolled. This means making the teaching profession attractive to young people, attractive both financially and prestige-wise. If you're interested in meeting this challenge to our children's future, Join and work with local civic groups and school boards actively seeking to improve educational conditions. Better schools make better communities. Good citizens everywhere are helping. McGee, where are you? In the living room, Molly, studying this picture of mine. He still hasn't given up on that snapshot contest. It's amazing what a $50 prize will do for a man's ambition. He hasn't taken an afternoon nap for three days. Running around, snapping pictures. Oh, gone it, this thing's got me stumped. I thought having the camera shop enlarge it might help, but... Still fooling with that same picture, are you? Well, I hate to give up on this one. There's a mother cat carrying her kittens across the street in this picture somewhere. They were right in front of me when I clicked my camera. And so was that big bus. You saw it on the negative, McGee. The bus is blocking the view. I can see that cat's tail right there sticking out behind the rear bumper. See it? Sure, sure, I see it. But doggone it, this would be such a wonderful, unusual picture if I could just figure some way to get that bus out of there. Well, why don't we just sit down in front of the picture and wait till the traffic light turns green? Then the bus will move on and we can see the cat carry your kittens. This is no joke, <laughs> Molly. You know very well that light won't turn green. The picture wasn't took in color. It's black and white. True, true. After all, I'm just trying to win that 50 bucks to give it to your ladies' club Christmas fund, you know. I'm not making a dime out of this personal, you know. Nobody is. Really, though, dearie, I appreciate the trouble you're going to trying to win this money for us, but uh, why don't you just forget the cat and kittens? Start over. You'll find another unusual picture. Oh, I'll never get another chance like this. It's such a clear picture, too. Look at them cars. Look at that convertible there. You can even read the license plate. M304J. Look at that sedan next to it. T-1076. I'm sorry, sweetheart. Now I've got to go hang out some laundry. Catch the phone, will you? Sure. I'll be out in the backyard if Mabel Toops calls. And downtown shopping if Mrs. Spradley calls. Okay, kiddo. I know what you mean. That old lady Spradley can talk louder and faster than a trapped politician. And she makes about as much sense... I wonder who that is. Come in. Hi, mister. It's me. Oh, hi, Marilyn. Marilyn. Yeah. Aren't you Marilyn Monroe, the movie star? I've been reading a lot about you in the papers lately. Sure nice to meet you in person. (laughs) I'm not Marilyn Monroe, mister. You're not? No, I'm teeny. Step into the light here a minute. Well, I'll be darned. You two girls certainly look alike. We do? You're a little shorter, of course. Your hair is brunette and you still got braces on your teeth, but... Aside from that, it's sure hard to tell the difference. Oh, gee. Would you tell that to Willie Toops? 
What you just said about me and Marilyn Monroe, would you tell him that, mister, hmm, would you, hmm? Well, why, sure, sis. Why do you want me to tell Willie Toops? Then maybe he'll stop calling me Stinky. Oh. Well, I'll put that on my list. Do it the first thing in the morning. Thanks, mister. Hey, I almost forgot what I came to tell you. A man is looking for you, Mr. McGee. A man? A man with a briefcase, like Mr. Wellman. The one he takes with him when he goes to people's houses to sell them insurance. Oh, not one of them guys. He asked me where you live. Well, I hope you didn't tell him, sis. The hardest thing to get rid of is an insurance salesman. Mama told me never tell a lie. It's naughty. Well, I guess she's right, sis. So, I didn't say anything. Mm Mm-hmm. I just stood there, and I pointed to Mr. Toops' house. <laughs> Good girl. Swell, Teeny. Here's a present for you, sis, to show my appreciation. Oh, boy, what is it? It's it's a picture, Teeny. Snapshot. Picture of a bus with a tail. Oh. The only one of its kind in the world. You see where its tail's coming out of the back bumper there? Oh, gee, that's wonderful, I betcha. Mm-hmm. A bus with a tail. Yep. I didn't know they had them. They're very rare, sis. Thanks, mister. Hey, Willie. Look at this picture Mr. McGee gave me. A bus with a tail. Hey, Molly, keep out of sight. I'm going to pull down the blinds. Don't answer the bell. There's an insurance salesman loose in this neighborhood. Boy, it's a good thing Teeny warned me. Once one of them guys gets a foot in the door, you... This may come as a bit of a shock to some of us. But do you realize that just three weeks from today is Christmas? Yank. How did it get here so fast? (laughs) That's how a lot of us are going to feel from here on in. But you know there's a wonderful answer to a lot of our Christmas shopping problems. That's the beautiful, practical Papermate pen. Yes, Papermate is a pen that's approved by bankers and by school principals everywhere. The pen that can't leak. Papermate ink dries instantly, which means that your Papermate writing can't smear or transfer. And it means no more ink stains on your hands or clothes which is a mighty important item, too. You can buy the paper made anywhere right now without a lot of bothersome shopping and waiting. You get a free gift box with every pen, and it still costs only $1.69. So just take a look at the paper made pen in any one or all of its seven beautiful color combinations and start checking the names off your Christmas list. It makes a handsome gift, a useful gift, and a much appreciated gift. So give the gift you know is right. Give paper made pen... Don't answer it, kiddo. Just let it ring. But that's the uh, tenth time he's pushed that button. Maybe he'll get discouraged and go away. Not an insurance salesman. You know the old saying, there's no one with endurance like the man who sells insurance. He may not be selling insurance, though. We really don't know that. But what difference is it? A salesman is a salesman. If you just give me... I can't take any more of this. I'm going to open that door. You'll be sorry, kiddo. Yes? How do you do? I represent... We the... don't want any sigh. Whatever it is, we've got a closet full of it now. Try right across the street. I think you'll be interested in what I have to say, Mr. McGee. If I may step inside a minute... Don't cross that threshold, Buster. I'll talk to you where you darn are. I'm a busy man, and I'll give you just 30 seconds. What do you want? Oh, this is going to be tough. Well, sir, I represent the state insurance company. My name is Leslie, Joseph A. Leslie. Here's my card. So what? I have a proposition to discuss with you that'll be to your advantage, so... Ah, uh, same old pitch, huh? Don't you guys ever change the needle? I got all the insurance I need. I'm not trying to sell you any insurance. I merely want to talk oh, to you about... Oh, no? Ha! I've heard that routine, too. Think you can throw me off guard, eh? And before I know it, you've got me rode up against fire, theft, tornado, selective service, and hoof and mouth disease. No, sir. You're just barking up the wrong prospect, bud. You just let me explain, sir. I'm sure Good I... day, Mr. Leslie. I'm not interested. Well, you certainly settled that, didn't you? Or did you? You ring that bell once more, and I'm calling the cops. Yes, I settled it. You got to be tough with them guys, Molly. If you don't, they start following you on the street. I mind one time there was one. Right, of them... Mr. Strunk, Mrs. McGee. Oh, I went. No, no. I was upstairs reading my bird book and I heard somebody. No, that wasn't Mr. Strunk. That was a man selling insurance, Mr. Wimple. Who's Mr. Strunk? You remember the truck driver friend of Mr. Wimple's we met in the country the other day? Oh, him. We're going to a meeting of our Wistful Vista Bird Watchers Society this afternoon. Oh? Mr. Strunk is picking me up in his truck. That's kind of like picking up a BB in a coal scoop, ain't it? I, I beg your pardon? Skip it. Strunk's a bird watcher, too, is he? Yes. This is his third year, Mr. McGee, and Otto is no longer a fledgling. Hmm. He's already won 13 feathers so far. <laughs> Amazing, I think. He went home from our last meeting with four for correctly identifying a blue jay, a marsh wren, 
a starling, and a road runner. Well, well. And they were all wearing masks, too. <laughs> He's the only one. Oh, that must be him now. I'll get the door. If you want me, Molly, I'll be out in the backyard. I'm going to burn some old film and stuff. Hello, Mr. Strunk. Come in. Hi, Wallace. Birds fly east. Birds fly west. Wistful vista, birds fly best. Peep, peep. Keep, keep. Tweet, tweet. Boys, boys, boys. Watch them. Well, that was lovely. Thank you, Mrs. McGee. <laughs> That's our official greeting. Uh, you remember Mrs. McGee, Mr. Strunk. I run upstairs and get my... Sure. Baby. How could I forget a nice-looking da- uh, lady like you, huh? Eh? Well, thank you. Uh, sit down, Mr. Strunk. Hey, what's this Mr. Strunk stuff? I ain't no bank president or something. Call me Otto. That's what the girls at the packing plant call me. Otto. All right, Otto. And you can call me Mrs. McGee. That's the deal, Miss McGee. You know, there's a blonde down the packing plant that's a lot like you. Really? Yeah, that girl's really something. Wow. Her name's Lana. You sure remind me of her. That's very flattering. The foreman's just crazy about that Lana. Well, good for her. Yeah, he says he wishes he had ten more like her. You know, that girl packs 30 cases of cucumbers a day. (laughs) Sounds like a talented girl. You're kind of built like her, you know. Good and solid. Kind of powerful like. Well, I I never thought of myself as being powerful. Uh, Thank you very much. You ever considered packing cucumbers, Miss McGee? You can make good dough, especially if you was fast like Lana. No, I... I... Oh, hi, Strunk. What's new? Hi, Mac. I'm just picking Wallace up for the meeting. I was out back burning some junk, Strunk. A lot of old film and stuff from a contest I'm in. Did you clean out your dark room, dearie? The whole mess. I'll take my camera tomorrow and start all over because I'm... Oh, uh, that reminds me, Mac. Was that insurance guy here to see you? Insurance? You mean that Joseph Wesley? Yeah, that's the jerk. Ask me where you lived. I threw him out. Good thing you did. I knew there was a catch to it. A catch? Yeah. Said he wanted to buy a picture off of Mac here for 75 bucks. Somebody seen him took it. I'm ready, Otto. I've got my big book. Quiet, Wimp. What picture, Otto? What picture? Oh, he says a client of his got his car mashed by a convertible yesterday while a cat was crossing the street or something. A cat? 14th and Oak? Yeah, that's it. A convertible? Yeah. Says a convertible got away. And if he could get a picture with a license number on it... He was going to pay the... Hey, Molly, the incinerator, the negative. Oh, no, hurry, quick, come on. Oh, gracious. You know, Wallace, the more I watch people, the better I like watching boys. Ever and Molly will be right back. Another weekend is here. Time for most of us to rest up from a week of hard work. And for wonderful relaxation, there's nothing better than sitting back in your favorite easy chair with a good book or a new magazine as you listen to the great entertainment on the NBC radio network. We here at NBC find that more and more people are catching up on their reading while listening to the radio. Over the weekend, you'll find a host of wonderful programs for your listening pleasure. Be sure to tune to NBC for such great shows as the NBC Symphony Orchestra, The Marriage with Hume Cronin and Jessica Tandy, the NBC Star Playhouse, Stroke of Fate, Last Man Out, and The Six Shooter, starring Jimmy Stewart. You'll find that the spot on your radio dial where the familiar three NBC chimes ring out is the place where you'll hear the best in pleasure-filled radio listening. So always tune to those familiar chimes. They're your invitation to join us and be fully entertained by top comedy, drama, mystery, and adventure on the NBC Radio Network. Well, it's Friday again, McGee. Yep. Hope you have a pleasant weekend, everybody. Don't forget to go to church Sunday. We'll see you again Monday. What are you going to do for the weekend, McGee? Sift ashes. If I can just find enough of that film to show that convertible's license number, I'll, I'll get it. Uh, good night. Good night, all. Well, Molly, good night. Good night, Otto. NBC and Paper Mate Pens have brought you the Fibber McGee and Molly program transcribed with Bill Thompson as Wallace Wimple, Jack Moyles as Otto, and Bob Bruce as the insurance man. This is John Wald inviting you to be with us again next Monday night for another visit with Bever McGee and Molly.
hours of fine music, yours every Monday on the NBC Radio Network.